appreciate it. Um, I hope everybody's, uh, you know, eating up. And uh, if you still are eating, I won't be offended. That's okay. Um, if you want to network, there's a great hallway track right here. So uh, please uh, take advantage of that as you can. Um, today I'm going to be talking about if you build it right, they will come, creating valuable WordPress products and services. I run a company uh, based in San Diego. We're a small development shop. We build products for WordPress, and I'm speaking out of my experience. So it took me years to learn how to build my first WordPress product. At first, I worked at it. I, I didn't even know what I wanted to do out of college. I, I graduated with a journalism major. I kind of saw how that industry was going in 2007. So I knew I liked computers. I'm not sure uh, you know, how those related. But I did get a job as a technical writer in an IT department. So that allowed me to, to really get my feet wet with computers, and then, which eventually led me down the road to discovering WordPress. Um, I started to build free plugins uh, you know, down after a couple uh, years as a freelancer. Uh, I started then working at an agency uh, all in San Diego. And then uh, eventually decided that I wanted to kind of get my name out there. And uh, the best way to do that is to build free uh, uh, products for WordPress. Um, the WordPress plugin repo has lots of free products, or plugins, excuse me, that are high quality. Um, so the first plugin I created was called WP No Tag Base. Essentially, this plugin is 50 lines of code. I forked it from another plugin called uh, WP No Category Base. And essentially, all it does is take the, the tag permalink structure out of your website. So an SEO plugin does one thing and it does it well. Second plugin I created was called Yelp Widget Pro. Essentially allows you to pull Yelp reviews onto your business website. Not only restaurants, but any business, including the one we're in right now, has Yelp reviews. If they're on WordPress, it allows you to pull in those reviews. Third plugin, essentially the same thing. It's called Google Places Reviews. Google reviews are starting to take over Yelp reviews. There was no plugin prior to this one that allowed you to easily uh, put your reviews on your WordPress website. My ideas didn't revolutionize anything, but they did solve problems, and people liked them. People actually used them. A lot of times you launch a plugin, maybe you'll get like two downloads a day. You know, people might like them, but it's not very popular. So I think when people like your plugins, it's great validation. And uh, if people don't like them, guess what? That's OK. Might still solve a problem. So when people liked my plugins, I built pro versions. Because you know, like everybody, you know, well, not most people, I like money. I wanted to make money. And I wanted to sell my code. So how did I do that? I created freemium products, where the free version has you know, a base. And then uh, I eventually built a business. So uh, WordPress is a great space for this. You can do it. You don't even need to know code. You know, you, many have, and many will succeed in our space here. Uh, WordPress is it's a great industry to be in. That's why you're here. You want to learn more about it. Perhaps you're already you know, uh, neck deep in it. Many have, many will succeed, but don't expect overnight success. You know, success doesn't come overnight with, uh, with WordPress. It takes time. It took me time to, to learn it. It took me years. It's not an instant cash machine like this little computer guy here. Uh, here, yeah. Why do you call it WordPress industry? Why do I call it WordPress industry? Industry, yeah. Industry. Um, it's just a, you know, I don't want to get caught up in semantics, just the word I used. I think that properly describes what we're in here. Um, easy digital downloads. This is one of the most popular plugins for WordPress uh, e-commerce accepting donation, or excuse me, downloads online on your website. Pippin Williamson, one of the most talented uh, WordPress developers, is behind this. He's a great guy. He's built a great company around this product. Yoast, SEO by Yoast. This is a, one of the most popular WordPress plugins. I think it's in the top two, three. It gets like 20,000 downloads a day. 
Um, on top of that, he's branched out and he's done more than products. He does services. He does SEO site reviews. I think they're like $1,000 a pop now, maybe $800. Last time I heard, they were doing like 30 to 40 a day. So he has like 50 people in his company now. It's really great to see these small companies growing up from a product into services, maybe services into products. It's a, it's a great thing to see. I'm sure everybody's heard of WooCommerce, right? Yeah, it's the top e-commerce plugin for WordPress. Um, a couple years ago, you know, 2008, nine, WordPress didn't do e-commerce very well. People wanted to use it. The, the authors of this original plugin forked a popular uh, e-commerce plugin back in the day, made it better, and now it's the go-to solution. Recently, they were acquired by Automatic. It's one of the largest acquisitions in our industry's history, if not the largest. I'm not sure what the exact price tag was, but it was in the millions of dollars. Not just you know single-digit millions, double-digit millions. That's a lot. They have 50 people that you know are now automaticians. So, great story with uh, WooCommerce. So, how do you define success in business? Um, a lot of people have different uh, opinions on how they define success. Um, personally, when I first started out, I found just myself was success enough. I I like being coding, you know, I like building my own plugins. But then I found it turned into, you know, I want a small number of folks with me. I want, you know, somebody maybe to handle support, the finances. So it changes in time, you know, it doesn't have to be set. Eventually, I'd like to have an entire company like, like Yoast and, you know, WooCommerce and, and some of these top guys. It's, it's, uh, it's something that I strive for and I think everybody else here has ambition and goals too. The bottom line is, know your why. Um, earlier, it was mentioned uh, in a presentation here, uh, Simon Sinek, he's got a great book, um, Start With Why. I completely agree with that. The why, when you answer the why, you can, you can move forward. And I, I realize that not always, this isn't you know, cut and dry why, but you need to have goals. And you need to set your goals. That's something Simon Sinek always says, you know, evaluate your goals. There's also a good book called uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And it's, <laughs> and it's a lot about setting your goals as well. Not just long-term goals, short-term goals. Uh, regularly evaluate your goals. And, and remember, you know, goals are flexible. They're not something that has to be set in stone. Um, you should strive to attain them and keep them the way they are, but things change. It's 2015, you know. We have to be flexible. We have to be nimble. Know your market, WordPress. I'm sure everybody knows it pretty well, but I just want to show you, you know, a bit about the market that we're in. WordPress is an established leader. Again, sorry, it's a little hard to see. But you can see one dot all the way out here. These are all the CMSs being used online by the market. And you see Drupal on, on the used by fewer sites. WordPress way over here on the right-hand side. Let me show you a, another visualization of this. WordPress CMS usage. It kind of looks like a piece symbol, but check it out. WordPress is right here at 40% usage of all CMSs for that power of the internet. Other, it's 40% as well. But those are like, I coded a CMS, I put my client on it, Should, probably shouldn't have done that, now they're, they're stuck with it, right? Um, a lot of people like to do this. Some agencies will stick them on a proprietary CMS and say, you know, Good luck leaving us ever. Um, Drupal is right here in the green percent, nine percent, and then all these other ones, you can't even read them, they're all mashed together. So that's a huge piece of the pie we're working with here. Here's some more interesting t statistics. Again, Manage WP had this great article recently called 14 Surprising Statistics. You don't know about WordPress usage. 75 million sites almost depend on WordPress. That's a huge number of websites. 48% of Technorati's top 100 blogs are managed with WordPress. Those are some popular blogs like Wired.com. Wow, they're doing some really cool stuff. One of the best things about WordPress is it's translated in so many different languages. It's, it's grown internationally because of this. A lot of those proprietary, proprietary CMSs I showed aren't 
being translated, you know, maybe they're only in English. That's a huge limitation. If you brought that CMS to Japan, a lot of people wouldn't know what to do with it. WordPress has grown substantially in other markets because of its enormous internationalization. Internationalization is a large word, but it means basically it's translated in a lot of different languages. Um, as well, WordPress is most popular with business websites. So typically, the people that buy our products or we're doing business with on a services side um, are going to be small businesses. So that's, that's great to hear that it's most popular with businesses. You know, it's not just bloggers anymore that are using it. It's, that's, that's when it first started out. Now it's a CMS. 59% <coughs> of very small businesses still don't have a website. This is from bizjournals.com. This is, I was told this yesterday, this is a, a poll from GoDaddy recently, came out two days ago. This strikes me as really, really interesting and shows me that there's enormous upside in our industry. WordPress is just gonna continue to grow. Small businesses are gonna go to it. GoDaddy, all these great hosts, WP Engine, Media Temple, they're all pressing for people to install WordPress. You know, you go to their website, it's a main uh, navigation item, it might be the main hero image or whatever you see. WordPress is front and center. Here's a look at a few WordPress businesses that I mentioned. Again, these numbers are speculatory. I got them from this great post by Scott Bollinger. He's an excellent community, uh, WordPress community um, representative. And Automatic, the most recent figures I could find were $45 million in 2012, hosting products. WP Engine, lots well, of WP Engine people here. I'm not sure if this is accurate or not, but $120 million valuation, that's a huge company. Gravity Forms, this is a single plugin that does one thing really, really well. $5 million a year. Well, it does a lot more than one thing, but. Yoast, I think this is a low estimate, but $2 million a year. WP Rocket, they've been posting monthly revenue reports for months now. When I first started looking at them, they were like 20,000, Grew to 35,000. Last one I saw, they were making 90K a month on a caching plugin. Again, I don't want to make sure, make, you know, paint it like this is get rich quick. So here's a plugin that's been around a long time, WP Pop-Up Maker. You know, it's floating one guy's bill, 2K a month. You can make some good money as a, you know, plugin dev out there. So what do you sell? Products or services? Products, there's many different opportunities to go in the product space with WordPress. Themes, again, some people might tell you, oh, the theme market's saturated. You know, go disrupt it. Plugins, what are you gonna do in the plugin space? There's plenty of opportunities to make WordPress do things that it's not doing right now, and there's no plugin for it. Tools, I talk about tools because like Manage WP has built a SaaS product about managing all your WordPress installs. Infinite WP, similar thing. This isn't necessarily a plugin or a, a, a theme. It's, it's a tool that helps you manage it. And also, you could be a host as if you wanted to. I mean, go ahead. <coughs> could be tough, though. Um, services, development, design, consulting, optimization, support. I was a freelancer for a long time. I was peddling my services and then trying to get in the product space. Some people were or doing one thing really well or the other. So there's no reason why you can't do one or the other. The key is find your niche. We've, and it doesn't just have to be one. Find your niche for your product. For instance, we have a, a, a donation plugin called Give. We saw a niche out there, an opportunity to really take on a space and do it right. So that's one niche we found. Business reviews was another. A lot of people want to show reviews on their websites from other websites like Yelp and Google. So I went in there and, and took it over. What's your idea? Has to be good. This, this reminds me at night, like I'm trying to go to sleep. I can't turn off my ideas. There's so many of them. <laughs> <laughs> my mind never stops. I'm an idea person. But you got to weed out your ideas, you know? You got to beat them up. You got to show them to people. A lot of people are like, we're part of Advanced Facebook. It's uh, or Advanced WordPress on Facebook. And a lot of people are like, I got this great idea. Don't tell anybody. Shh. <laughs> and don't be afraid to tell people your idea. If it's so great, like, nobody's going to try to steal your idea. Like, come on. 
be, share it. Share it with your friends. If you're afraid to share it publicly, pull somebody over and get in a little nook. There's plenty of opportunities here to do it. Uh, somebody showed me their idea earlier today. It was great. I was really impressed with it. So ask yourself, who won the fight? Did my idea win the fight? Or when I showed lots of people, they were like, oh, you know, this does the same thing as like Visual Composer. Why, why are you building that? You know? So did the idea win? If it did, then what do you do? You build your brand. Don't build your product first, build your brand. So you can see Coca-Cola here. Look, it's evolved over time. It's a great brand. Everybody knows it. Let me show you the first version of our logo that I did myself. Not very good, but. Whoa, whoa. Me attempting to brand my product myself. Do it on the cheap. You know, I think I've got some design skills. What did I do? I googled hipster fonts. And then, <laughs> and then I found a hipster image, and I slapped the font over it. And then I was like, I like leaves. Let's, <laughs> let's, <coughs> let's go to Icon Finder and find a leaf. So I, I, I slapped the leaf on there. I was like, give. All right, let's, let's take this market on. Um, Luckily, at this time, I had partners, and I passed this logo, and they're like, eh, don't do that. So we went out, and we found an actual logo designer, brand specialist. And this is the first version of the logo that they gave us. And we're like, whoa, this is pretty good. It's way better. It's got like a little, he, he tried to explain this as like a G holding a heart with like a hand underneath it. And we're like, nah, we don't see that. You know, it's not really f working for us. So what do we do? We iterate. We went to the next version. We're like, OK, this is looking better. Like, you, he blew my He's like, I made the G a leaf. And you can kind of see it. And, uh, and I was like, yeah, this is really neat. The problem is the lettering is just, it needs to be like, we're, we're almost there. We, we're almost there. But you just need to kind of hash it out a little bit more so it looks a little more visually appealing. So finally, we got to our final logo here. Uh, after a couple more iteration processes, this is like version 4. Point whatever, but it, this is the logo we stuck with. And we really like it. We've gotten a lot of compliments on it. So we built our brand. We paid attention to detail. We didn't settle for lackluster, uh, you know, what I did. And <laughs> if you can't do it yourself, do it, you know? Like, find somebody who can. So now that we had our brand in place, um, what did we do then? We, we went into this. Does, does anybody know what this is? stands for? Yeah, what's that? Minimum viable product. Bingo. Minimal viable product. So a lot of people, when they come up to me and they, they talk about their product, they're like, you know, oh, it's this great idea. It's, you know, it's been in development for two years. We can't, we can't you know, really talk much about it but we're, we're in the dark phase right now. We're probably going to launch next month. And, and so, you know, first of all, like, I'm not uninterested because they're not giving me, like, the elevator pitch about what it does. And I, I, they're not following the MVP model. So what is that? It's not like this. You're not giving your users a wheel first or trying to get a car. Give them a little skateboard, you know. If you hand me a steering wheel, I'm going to be like, eh, what am I going to do with this? Just give me a skateboard. I'm going to go skateboard around. Use it. So build first on some of the simple uh, functionality first. So keys to a successful MVP. Focus on the simple implementation of your product first. Start with a minimal set of features. And then release and listen to your users. That way you can get into getting actual user feedback uh, you can start the iteration process, and you don't waste a bunch of time and money developing it. Once you've launched it, it's time to validate your minimal viable product. Products solve problems. Did your product solve the problem, or did it just kind of skirt around it? Question everything. Doesn't make sense to launch now. Should I launch now or later? What, what are the pros and cons? What's the ROI? What do I get? What do my users get? And never stop iterating. There's always room for improvement. There's always room for optimization. 
One thing that's probably should be on here is documentation and support. That's definitely important too. <laughs> it's never coming later. Launch with documentation. Launch with support in place. It's very important. So, do you need help? Um, there's, you know, I, I didn't, obviously I'm not a designer. I know how to code pretty well. I, I can design some things, but not logos. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of quality developers on the internet for you to go out and ask for. Or to, to say, hey, are you interested in partnering up? Or are you available for freelancing? One such group is called Advanced WordPress. Again, we don't really enjoy people soliciting for work on there, but there's a great group called WordPress Freelancers. It's on Facebook. All that group is set up for is to help you find freelancers for WordPress. Again, local WordPress meetups, uh, PHP meetups. You'll find a lot of good developers at PHP meetups. Usually, when you go to the WordPress meetups, if it's can, it can vary in expertise levels. Um, word camps like this one, you guys are taking the first step. You're, you're, you're learning about WordPress. You're going to see what it does. You're going you know, to learn more about it. You're going to you know, try some code out. You know, if you're like Macaulay Culkin right here, you might need to find some, uh, some developers. They're here, everybody. Quality designers. We found our logo, desi logo designer on dribble.com. Has anybody heard of this website? Excellent website. Designers go on this website and they post what they, their work. And the same with Behance. It's, I believe that's owned by LinkedIn now, which, you know, it's okay with me, I guess. <coughs> we basically went through there and trolled all the logo designers until we found one we liked that did custom, custom typography, kind of like we did uh, on the, our Give logo. And, uh, and we reached out to him. At first, uh, he, he, you know, he quoted us a, a really reasonable rate, and then he stuck, kept with his rate. So you're not always going to find the quality first. We got lucky with this one, but you, know, you, you might have to proceed with caution, like I say with Envato Studio and 99designs. You know, some of the, the, the freelancers on there could be um, very unresponsive, uh, could do lackluster work. Never use a site like Fiverr for your logo design. <laughs> Can't say that enough. Fiverr is uh, clip art that you'll get for five bucks. So um, it's good for something. But, uh, as far as logo design, I don't know. Always remember that you can do it. I, I imposter syndrome years ago. You know, like somebody said earlier, I wasn't really into the public speaking thing. Face your fears in the face like this and, you know, just, just do it. It's, you know, this guy's trying to cheat, but his hand says just do it. He's not going to, he's just going to complete it. So that's the best advice I can give. So always stay the course and, um, and WordPress is a great choice to build your business in. Uh, my name is Devin Walker. You can find me online at Interwebs. Uh, thank you very much. And my company name is Wordpress. Thank you guys.